What is up internet? TJ here with Heading 2. Today we're going to be looking at creating a simple jQuery slider with the Slick JS library. Let's hop right in and take a look. I'm going to start off with creating a new pen and code pen. Type with Slick JS gallery. Start setting up a structure here. Get our H1 in there. Go ahead and build the actual slider container along with the images. Start off with six. We'll go ahead and add in these into the Spider-Verse pictures that I pre-selected before getting started with the tutorial. I don't know about you guys, but I'm super amped to see this movie. Spider-Man is my ultimate all-time favorite comic book hero. Followed in close second by Wolverine. So, go ahead and get some copy and paste action in here. We'll go ahead and set up the preprocessor stuff, reset the CSS, come in here and grab the slick CSS and slick JS code by uh, putting in an external script to it our external pen link in here because for some reason I couldn't get the original slick CSS and JS to work from this GitHub here in the repo within CodePen. Uh, going ahead and linking to that stuff through either downloading the files or putting them in your directory and linking through there work fine outside of CodePen in a website that you're developing. But for some reason I had that issue, so I went ahead and using that pen as a resource for some of the library stuff and functionality going on. So go ahead and get started getting the JS ready. Go ahead and take a peek at the site for Slick JS. See that we can initiate slick right in there. I think that this is called slider is copy and paste. And we can see that it's working already, but we don't quite have any good style or design here. Looks a little wonky as is. Go ahead and put some options and settings in. Say that infinite is true so that we can keep scrolling through back to the beginning as we go to the last one. We'll set up how many slides we can see and how many slides to scroll through. I have a little wonkiness here with the particular image. Let's just go ahead and kill that. We refresh, everything seems to be working fine. And don't like that the buttons just say previous and next, so go check out the settings that we can use to put our own HTML in there and get our own previous and next buttons in there with our own graphics. Go ahead and open up Font Awesome, search for some nice arrows that we can use. And probably not any of those right to start with, but come on down also link that up as a resource in there so that it actually works when you put in HTML for each arrow. So go ahead and put previous arrow, that in there, copy and paste this and make the necessary adjustments to get our right arrow in there. There we see that that's all working still not quite so pretty so we'll come in here start getting some styling in here with our css give the heading one some space get it centered up change the font size so it looks more important and looks like a main heading go to 4m get it bold 
Let's make it all caps. Because I like that. I will come in here next and start getting the container all ready. Give it a little more space. Position relative so that we can get the arrows in there positioned absolutely and center those up in a minute. Get some rudimentary styles on the images. Just refresh so that we see that looking like we want it to. There we go. Margin in. Go ahead and make it look like it can do something. Uh, maybe in a future tutorial we'll have some light box fun in there and a little bit more interactivity, but just get some bare bone stuff in here so that we can get the slider gallery working the way we want it to. Come in here and give it a little interactivity by changing the opacity and giving it a transition so it moves smoothly. Uh, scale up a little too big so we'll lessen that to 1.05. See if we can get another color in here. Make it a little darker. That doesn't seem to be doing anything so we'll probably just get rid of that. So we got some nice little hover states going on. We will take the class from the arrow so that we can position them where we want them to. And absolute positioning. Get them 50% from the top. And to give that padding. Refresh real quick and get these position where we want them. Come in here and make them look like buttons as well. Give them a transition for when we get some hover active states going. Go ahead and copy and paste this class so that we can get the left arrow positioned out to the left and then get the right arrow positioned out to the right. To 0.5m. That's more like it. Bump up the size a little bit. Give that transform and translate it up so it's a little bit better centered. We'll just keep tweaking away, getting it to look a little bit more appealing. Flesh it out and get, getting it to look like something we'd actually use in a website or a landing page. Come in here and add a button. This won't really go anywhere, but we'll just make it look a little bit more complete. Show them that we can go order some tickets online if we'd like. Go ahead and put that in there. Looking a little funky. Let's see if we can fix that up. So we'll give it its own class, center it up, get those aligned correctly. I'm not quite sure why. It looks like they're both display blocks. Check it out. I'm 
seem to have any styling to tell that I own it to the blocks. So we'll keep playing with it, see if we can work it out. Display. So I'm not doing what I thought it would. Still nothing like giving an inline. See what happens if you take away the anchor element. No progress. See what's going on here. We didn't fix that. It looks to be okay, except it's not. Still not. Huh? Let's see what happens if we change. Font awesome icon. I'm not sure what the issue is, but changing it to the other font awesome icon seems to have fixed the problem. Do a little bit more tweaking to get them lined up and centered vertically. This is that, give it a little space, and let's make this look more like a button. What color should we make this? Maybe something Spider-Man-like. Photoshop, see what we can come up with. Looks like a good Spider-Man red. Give a little breathing room, maybe a radius too. Spell it correctly and see if that works. It's looking a little better. state. Let's do the same thing over here for the arrows. Everything seems to be working pretty swimmingly. It's looking pretty good. Don't know if we'll make any other tweaks. Let's see what happens if we try to get ticket on contact in there. Hopefully it was just a weird glitch and this works out. Let's see what happens if it's a different icon. Copy paste, there we go. Alright, no wings. Come on, ticket. Find the original ticket. Copy and paste one more time, and hopefully, third time the charm. And it is. A little bit more tweaking, but I'd say we're just about there. All the functionality that we need for a simple gallery slider. Again, we'll probably do another tutorial where we look at light boxing and maybe doing a little tweaks to get the images to all be the same height. Um, we could probably do that by making the 
images, the background image to a div, getting it positioned and centered the way we like. Then we can go ahead and light box and get a full screen picture in there. But that should do it. I think that's pretty good. Thanks for checking out today's video. If you liked it, hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification icon so you don't miss any of our upcoming video tutorials.